Hey everybody, it's Noel from The Drawing Room, and I'm really excited to tell you today about Looper Pack. Looper Pack is a set of 40 animated texture loops that I made for After Effects. They are available to purchase in three different ways. The first is as a Ray Dynamic Texture Ready After Effects project, and I'm definitely most excited about this because I think that Ray Dynamic Texture is the holy grail of texture making for After Effects, so thank you Sonder and Lloyd for making that. We're also selling them as lossless 2K, QuickTime movies, or PNG sequences, so whatever's best for you. So if you've downloaded the Looper Pack for Ray Dynamic Texture After Effects project, go ahead and put that folder into your texture library. And this is easy as pie. All you need to do is just find the After Effects project and pull that into After Effects. Okay? And then make sure to launch Ray Dynamic Texture, and once you refresh that, um, the loops will just show up here ready to go and they should work perfectly. Uh, if you open the folder you can see the Ray Dynamic Texture pre-comps and I've set these up so that they um, show you all the loops and um, you know name them. I've broken it down into four categories. Grainy loops which go from very fine grain to big grain and some very dark grain. And we have some gritty loops which have light speckles and really chunky grit and some light and heavy grits as well. A variety. And then we have some liney loops which have vertical and horizontal lines as well as diagonal and some funky other ones. And finally we have these loopy loops which are just really silly and fun textures that I came up with like type and swirls and things. I do want to point out two things about them, which is one, I built them all 2K, uh, so they're larger than a 1920 by 1080 comp. And secondly, they're all for the most part black and white only. So you need to use them as Luma mats or Luma inverted mats, but not as alpha mats. Okay, so two important points. Sander Van Dyke, who created Ray, uh, is a very smart guy, and he has a great set of tutorials that are very, very clear. So you should definitely watch those. But if you haven't, and you just want to know how to use the tool real quick, I made a, a simple little test comp here uh, with a shape layer on a background. And uh, I'll just show you how you can add a, one of these looping textures into this shape layer real quick. So it's very easy. Um, the hardest part with the looper pack is you're just going to be determining which one of the 40 ones you want to actually use because they're all so awesome. Um, but uh, just say in this case I want to try this one here. I can just hover over the icon and see that it's my horizontal rakes. All right. And um, now I'm going to just select this layer and click on this. And that's going to put it in there, right? Now you will see that sometimes this has happened to me and I'm not quite sure why, possibly because this is animated. If I select my um, the, the QuickTime movie layer, the Luma mat, right? Um, you can see that it didn't quite like line it up perfectly with my shape. It put it over here for some reason. I'm not totally sure why it's happening, but um, all you need to do is just kind of put it back here and figure out where uh, you want it to go. In this case, it kind of wipes across the center. So I'd want it to be kind of contained to that area somehow. So I just scaled that down a little bit. Right away you can see that it fills it in and the texture is moving just like it should be. And uh, everything is great. All you would need to do is select U to see the time remap keyframes. And if you want to make the loop uh, longer, aka slower, you just need to select this second time remap keyframe and drag this back in time. Put some distance between that and the first one and now the loop will happen slower, right? You could choose to parent this uh, loop to the um, rectangle, right? In that case, the texture would move with it, which is kind of fun. So um, the only other thing that you need to deal with is the color, uh, because these are black and white mats. They will come in as black and white at first. And if we want to fill it into this blue color, we have a couple of options involving transfer modes. All right. If you want to add the black in and drop out the white, you would want to use multiply. Right. And then that puts it back on the nice blue text, blue color that I chose. Right. Um, if you want to do the opposite, though, and you want these to be white lines and have it drop down in the background, you have to do a little bit of a dance, okay? So what you have to do is change this to add, 
which then makes it so that it drops out the black and shows the blue, which isn't what we're looking for. And then you have to apply an effect to this. Since this is a black and white mat, what we need to do is change it so that what's black is white and what's white is black. And I think the easiest way to do that is to select the layer and go to Effect, Channel, and Invert, okay? And now, with, because it's Add, now it's white lines on the um, blue background. So in this case, I think that looks really nice. So yes, yeah, so that's the way you deal with color. Uh, sometimes overlay is also a good thing to play around with as well. If you don't have Ray and you've purchased the QuickTime movies or PNGs, they're still very easy to use. They just require a little bit more setup. So let's just walk through that real quick. With the QuickTime movies, you just need to pretty much just take any of them and uh, you know, just basically grab it and import it into After Effects any way you want. And then you can use those in your comps um, you know, to fill in textures, all you need to do is you see it comes in and it's not looping. So you need to set this up for a loop. You need to hit Option Command T to enable time remapping, or you can go to Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping, Option Command T, okay? And when you put that on, obviously it gives you the time remap keyframe for the beginning and end of the layer. And then you can extend this out and basically all you would need to do to loop it is just option click on the keyframe and type lowercase loop, L-O-O-P, and then no space, uppercase O-U-T, loop out, and then open parentheses, close parentheses, just like that. And then if you hit return or click out of that, now this will continue to loop. And just like before, you could just take this second time remap keyframe and stretch it out and now it will be a slower loop, right? So with that in here now, okay, if I wanna fill that into this shape and keep the color, this was my circle, let me just label this, right? I just would need to duplicate my circle, put it on top here, parent that to the original circle, and now take the looping mat and make this a luma mat, right? And now that will take the texture from that, turn off the top cloned circle and add it in here. And now as before, we could just make this multiply or whatever and it'll preserve the color. So uh, that's not too bad. And uh, that's the way you would create, uh, you know, create it using the regular QuickTime movie. Um, the PNGs are exactly the same. I'm sure you know how to import them, but in case you don't, uh, all you have to do is Command I, and the only difference with the uh, PNGs is the way you import them. So, for example, here's one that I've already opened. If I go in here and I select the first one in the series, and I click Options, I just make sure that uh, Import as TIFF Sequence is checked. It comes in not as a default usually and then open that and then it brings it in just like a QuickTime movie basically but with a different icon and then you could for example option drag on top of the QuickTime movie and that would now have that texture in there and just like before you could you know scale this down and uh, you know work with it just like anything else so there you go that's the uh, that's the only real difference between the QuickTime movies and the uh, PNGs. And uh, overall, I do think that using Ray is a lot easier, but um, it's available to you in whatever format you might like. So thanks very much, and I hope you enjoy using these, and uh, let me know. Bye.